Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Welcome back, everyone. Great to have you here today on our Wellness and Weight Loss Wednesday show, episode 1965 of the Cabral Concept. We will be talking about exactly what breaks a fast and doesn't break a fast and which may break a fast for certain individuals. So we're going to be going through, each one has about a dozen different uh, components to it. So we will uh, go through those right now, try to pop them up on the screen if we're able to. I know there's a bunch in uh, what breaks a fast, so we'll go through as many as we can, kind of lump them in categories too for easier learning. And then when you're doing your next functional medicine detox or intermittent fast or longer water fast, whatever it might be, you'll be able to see what are the do's and don'ts. What can you consume besides water, of course? Um, well, maybe that's not of course, but we'll, we'll certainly talk about that in a second, that you might be able to enjoy while still getting all the benefits of fasting. And if you haven't listened to all the different benefits of fasting and why it's the closest thing that we have to the fountain of youth, I definitely recommend going back, listen to the particular podcast I have, just an intermittent fasting. It's actually a pretty fast growing uh, podcast, which I'm, I'm happy to see that uh, taking place. It's right in the nutrition section of iTunes. Uh, but of course, you can listen to it right at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. Just scroll through the images at the top, click on the intermittent fasting one. It's all the different podcasts I have on intermittent fasting. All right, so let's check it out. Let's go through right now what foods break a fast and which ones don't. Now, again, right before we do that, main reason why you don't want to break a fast is because you're fasting for a particular reason. When you're fasting inside of this human body here, if you're watching on video, inside of this, you know, beautiful machine, uh, we have all sorts of different processes that we couldn't even begin to imagine to comprehend. We know a lot of them, of course, through medical science, but this big breakthrough in 2016 happened called autophagy. And simply put, when we are not eating or there's less coming in than we need, we start to break down our, um, I would say, older decaying cells and bacteria and proteins that we then use as ener energy. So it actually helps to clean up the body, which can help with everything from cancer to anti-aging, uh, to improving overall skin, to improving mitochondrial energy. I mean, there's so many benefits to it. Again, I'm going to go through all that today. That's on previous podcasts uh, that will certainly link up today, episode 1965. So the, the truth is, isn't if you should be fasting, it's simply how long. So is it 12? hours, 14 hours, 16 hours. I've explained that on other shows for daily fast, but oftentimes people want to do a longer monthly or at least quarterly fast. That's what we do in our community and our, our health community. We're doing some type of intermittent fast uh, on a daily basis, 12, 14, or 16 hours. Uh, we are also sometimes doing a one day, once a week, uh, 24 hour, which is not, a, it's kind of, it is 24 hours, it's a full day, but it goes from dinner one night to dinner the next. So you still have dinner the next night. That's called the one day reset diet, if you want to check out that one. And again, we can link that up as well. And then every quarter, we do our functional medicine detox, which is technically a little bit more than two days, where we're doing a very specific uh, nutrient-based liquid fast for those two days, and then we get into a whole food diet again as well with certain functional medicine detox nutrients that help with phase one and two liver detox that we talked about on yesterday's show and all the different reasons why it's really no longer an option uh, to live a long, healthy life. I don't see any other way right now because of the over 144,000 man-made chemicals in the environment. Okay, so back to fasting. What breaks a fast? Let's go over those right now. So what breaks a fast, even though there's some debate on this, sucralose, artificial sweeteners like Splenda. They can still give the body a rise, believe it or not, in glucose or insulin or an increase in cravings, which leads people to then break their fast. So although there's a little bit of back and forth in this, 
I would certainly not be consuming artificial sweeteners, I mean, specifically for health, but even during a detox. You'll find out in what doesn't break a fast, um, some much healthier versions, okay? So what else breaks a fast? Well, MCT oil that a lot of people are putting into their coffee or their tea or even coconut oil still breaks a fast. And the reason is they're medium chain triglycerides and that is a specific type of energy fuel that's actually used more like a carbohydrate than it is a fat. But now that I've said that, adding fats like let's say avocado oil or uh, even olive oil, those will still break a fast as well. So I just wanted to put that in there because it's the fact that they are a fat uh, that is not going to be useful during that fast. Um, in terms of coffees, putting butter, well, another type of fat, right, or ghee, although that can be used in Ayurvedic fat with ghee, and there's a different reason for that, for actually helping to emulsify the bile in the liver ducts and, the, well, helping with the gallbladder as well. If you're looking for a straight fast, it breaks your fast, okay? Again, there's a time and place for that. I'm not against that at all, but if you're looking for a strict fast, it's going to break that fast. People are using a lot of powdered creamers now as well. Creamers, of course, are going to break the fast. They contain fat. They contain calories. Uh, but powdered creamers, same thing. It's going to break the fast. If you add that to your coffee, if you add that to your tea, uh, it can be absolutely delicious if you like it, uh, but it, it will break your fast. So I just wanted you to know that. Another one, sugar alcohols. So instead of artificial sweeteners, people are turning to... Uh, consuming like erythritol or uh, a lot of other artificial sweeteners. We'll just put it that way, xylitol. Uh, xylitol, swished around your mouth, not really an issue uh, if you're using that for, as part of like a, a natural mouthwash uh, but, or chewing gum, but certainly don't want to consume it. It will break a fast. Okay, so sugar alcohols are on that list uh, because of its effect on potentially on blood sugar. I know you're not going to get the same spike, uh, but also on turning on digestion as well. They actually act as a prebiotic. If you didn't know that, most sugar alcohols act as a prebiotic. So what else is up next? Well, proteins of any kind. Now, you may have thought this, you might not have thought this because protein helps to stabilize blood sugar. But when you take in protein, you are actually taking in amino acids and those amino acids would actually be used as fuel. They'll be used as a fuel to help with anabolism, so they'll help build up tissues, potentially help with mTOR, but they'll uh, growth hormone, et cetera. But what they also do is they can actually spike blood sugar, believe it or not. I know it seems strange, but proteins and amino acids can actually be converted in the body to carbohydrates if needed. They're an interesting uh, macro like that. Okay. Talking about spiking blood sugar are carbohydrates. Even if it's a low glycemic carb, even if it's vegetables, there's some load of carbohydrates. It doesn't mean it's going to spike blood sugar, but it will turn on digestion. It will at least provide some fuel for the body. So a lot of people doing vegetable-based juices or greens powder juices for fasts. The truth is that those can be really healthy for you. There's no doubt about it. However, uh, they are going to break the fast to a certain degree, but they're it's, it's to a very low degree. So let, let's say you were doing an extended fast and you were just doing strictly vegetable juicing. No sugar in that from fruits or anything like that, just vegetables. You know, there's a time and place where you could say that would be actually be very beneficial. You get all of those phytonutrients in your body. Um, you get a lot of the uh, flavanols, the antioxidants. I, I'm not against that. But if we're looking at strictly fasting, We'd want to be careful with taking in uh, larger amounts of carbohydrates. Vegetable would be the least of your worries. They really would. Uh, but anything that's going to be especially like breads, pasta, pastries, of course, going to break the fast. All right. Uh, what about fats? Well, fats, um, believe it or not, fats still break a fast. So whether you're putting in exogenous ketones or like MCT oil, like I spoke about before, or fats in general, not only are they breaking a fast, this is really important, but they so they're providing because they're providing the body with caloric energy and so they're actually providing the body with more energy than you would get from protein or carbohydrates so protein and carbohydrates are looked at as basically four energy units and fats are looking at as nine energy units so you get lots of energy from fats definitely going to break uh, the fast. And if you're looking at it in terms of autophagy, you have to be really careful with taking in a lot of fats 
while you are supposed to be fasting. Nobody ever talks about this, but lipids, fats are one of the best carriers of toxins in the body, such as heavy metals or PCBs, et cetera. Um, and they also carry bacteria and other uh, lipopolysaccharides, other toxins from the gut into the bloodstream as well. So you have to be really careful with taking in uh, a lot of fats, especially if, you, you know, if you're on an empty stomach as well. All right, the next one is bone broth. A lot of people are doing a bone broth based fast. Well, what is that good for? It's good for not having not to digest a lot. So there's not a lot of food coming in your system. And then bone broth uh, provides collagen. It provides glycine. It can help with gut based repair, uh, but there's certainly amino acids. There's certainly some fat in there and that will break your fast. All right. What about branch chain amino acids? A lot of people are using branch chain amino acids to preserve muscle while fasting. People want to keep their muscle on. They're using BCAAs. I get it. I understand it. Here's the issue. They're providing BCAAs. They're providing three of the most anabolic uh, amino acids in the world. So because of that, when you are essentially when you're in a fast or in more of a catabolic state, and if you put in more anabolic amino acids, you're pulling yourself out of that and, uh, catabolic state, and you're actually promoting the exact opposite process that's taking place. And that's why, you know, if you're a bodybuilder trying to build up, you're probably not doing a lot of fasting uh, because it, it's honestly, it's, it's counterproductive. It's taking you out of that anabolic state. It doesn't mean you shouldn't do it because, you know, it's certainly healthy, uh, but you want to look for that. And also what's not typically known is that BCAAs can actually raise insulin levels as well. All right. What about, uh, there's a couple random ones here. Smoking, believe it or not, smoking cigarettes may actually... If they don't break a fast, they certainly slow down your fast because they actually hurt liver detoxification phase one, phase two. Really important along the same lines, caffeine. For some people, it's going to break a fast. For others, it's not. I'm going to get to that in just a moment. But if it spikes your blood sugar, it's breaking a fast. All right. So coffee can actually be beneficial with fasting, with actually breaking down toxins uh, in the liver. However, if it spikes your blood sugar, it's not a good thing. How do you know if coffee or caffeine or energy drinks are breaking your fast? If you were to take a simple at-home glucometer, again, really easy, I have all of my different resources at stephencabral.com forward slash resources. And if you take your blood sugar 20 minutes after, just again, a simple drop of blood, put it on that little stick uh, on the cartridge, insert it, you'll get your blood sugar. If it's above a 95, most likely it kicked you out of a fasting state, that caffeine, because it spiked glucocorticoids, cortisol, which job is to actually break down liver glycogen or muscle glycogen, pull it in your bloodstream uh, for fight or flight based fuel. So believe it or not, even taking in just black coffee for some people can break their fast. All right, so those are foods and beverages that can break a fast. What doesn't break a fast? What's the good news in all of this? All right, well, straight up water is not going to break your fast and should be something that you do consume uh, while you are fasting, especially if you have some body weight to lose. And the reason is that as you're breaking down adipose tissue and a lot of those toxins are being moved in your bloodstream, you want to be able to excrete as many as you can through the liver, which comes out through the stool, the bowel movements, and then also through your kidneys, which comes out as urine, or if you're sweating through uh, your skin as well. So really, really important there. All right. Water is a big one. How about herbal teas? Well, most herbal teas like ginger tea or passion flower tea or hibiscus tea, uh, Tulsi tea. Those are some of my favorites. Those are excellent to drink. So if you want a little flavor, absolutely no problem. Go with those. But you have to make sure when you look on your tea container, your tea carton, that you are not having any teas with calories because sometimes they like to add other fruits or different types of sugars to them to make them more palatable. So if you're going to your local Starbucks and you're getting herbal tea, most likely it's gonna break your fast, all right? So it has to be an all natural tea, um, like a ginger tea, again, like I said, or a hibiscus, that's one of my favorites. All right, what else won't break a fast? Green tea. Typically green tea, even though it has about half the caffeine of coffee, of a small coffee, depending on where you get your coffee, of course, um, it will not break your fast because it also contains things like L-theanine and the caffeine coming from theobromine. So you're getting a caffeine that doesn't have as sharp of a spike, shouldn't give you the jitters, shouldn't give you anxiety, shouldn't spike those glucocorticoids. But of course, you can test that as well with a uh, glucometer. Now, black tea, though, typically will break your fast because of the caffeine. 
All right. What else won't break the fast? Most supplements are totally fine. So like people always ask on our CBO protocol for the gut, will those break a fast or will a uh, fluorofilm, a proteolytic enzyme break a fast? They, will no, they won't. So most supplements will not break a fast um, if they are herbs or they're enzymes or they're vitamins or they're minerals. Most will not. And that typically also includes electrolytes. However, most electrolyte powders also contain a sweetener. And if the sweetener is not a stevia, which should be fine, um, then uh, it, it probably will break your fast. But you can buy electrolyte drinks, if you'd like to use them, that only contain the electrolyte salts, or the electrolytes, the sodium, the magnesium, the potassium, some contain calcium, and those won't break a fast. Okay? So you can look at that. It's really the sweeteners in those. As long as there's no carbs, you should be fine. Uh, people have asked me, does, does glutamine and creatine, which are typically used by bodybuilders uh, or people looking to increase energy, I mean, creatine's been shown to help with so many different things. Glutamine, of course, is great for the gut, great for tissue repair. Uh, but do those things break a fast? And they typically do not, okay? So it's only what you mix them with. If you buy a creatine powder that's mixed with a sweetener, then yes, it can break a fast. But if it's just pure creatine monohydrate or pure L-glutamine, it's not going to break a fast. There's, there's no typical issues with that whatsoever. All right, so typically stevia, again, as I mentioned, falls into the will not break a fast, does not uh, uh, increase blood sugar. You should be totally fine in that regard. So then there's one more category now called maybe break a fast, but there's so many benefits to them that you may want to use them while fasting on a longer fast. All right, the first one is CBD oil. CBD oil may or may not break a fast. It seems that it may slow down some liver-based processes because it needs to be broken down in the liver. Same goes for THC and marijuana, by the way. So um, CBD oil, if it helps you stay calm, if it decreases uh, anxiety, great. However, if it increases appetite, it's not a good thing, right? So CBD oil, maybe. All right, when we are looking at a specific, like something like the daily nutritional support powder or an all-in-one that typically functional medicine doctors or integrative health practitioners recommend on a detox. Will that break a fast? Well, it seems that it may for a very short period of time. However, it may not for a lot of people. And the reason is that you're getting about seven grams of protein and you're getting some small amount of amino acids from that, which you want. You're getting less than 50 calories um, and you get all the detox factors along with it, which are the vitamins, the minerals, uh, sulforaphane, et cetera, that help the liver detox. So I put that in the category of you wouldn't do that during an intermittent fast, your 12, 14, 16 hours, but if you're doing a longer fast, giving your liver what it needs to better detoxify without spiking blood sugar, because it won't spike blood sugar, uh, that's a good thing in my book. Okay, decaf coffee, fine for most people. Now, here's the interesting thing. Still about 10 to 13 milligrams of caffeine in decaf coffee. So does that spike your blood sugar? It shouldn't from 99% you know, of people. It probably shouldn't. But you can always test it with a glucometer. Now, you can't add anything to that decaf coffee. It has to be black, uh, but um, it should be fine for most people. Plant-based sweeteners. I mentioned this before, um, but stevia being fine, but monk fruit or lohan may break a fast. All right, so just something to think about there. Apple cider vinegar. I put this in the category of I have no problem with people using it. Really no problem with people using it because it can be so beneficial for the liver and digestion. However, there's about one or two calories in there. So could it break a fast? Theoretically, yes. However, that's most likely going to be used and gone before it even touches your intestines. It's probably going to be utilized, pulled out through the stomach or first part of the uh, small intestine, which is the duodenum. And the last one is this, squeezed lemon. A lot of people love doing lemon in their water in the morning, uh, maybe even with a little bit of apple cider vinegar. And why do they do that? Well, it helps with digestion, helps with liver. So, so does that break a fast? Well, again, if you're going like theoretically based on those couple of calories, it could technically break a fast. However, the benefits to adding that, in my opinion, far outweigh a lot of the issues. And that is why I would keep it in. I have no issues with that whatsoever. So that is the breaks a fast does not break a fast, and may break a fast. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any others that you've been thinking about, simply add them in the comments below on Instagram, uh, on this post, or on YouTube. Happy to be able to answer those with you. Of course, if this was helpful, please do feel free to share it with anyone else you believe it could serve. Take care.
Thank you so much for tuning into today's Cabral Concept. Appreciate you, I truly do. And I wanna make sure that you know all about our brand new hormone labs that have debuted this week. They are typically $129, which is a very low cost for an at-home lab that also includes a 30-minute consultation with your Equalife health coach and a plan tailored to you. It's an absolutely amazing deal based on that hormone lab. We have the female hormones lab, which looks at progesterone and estrogen, and we have the male hormone lab, which looks at DHEA and testosterone. But instead of paying the $129, which you can, and it's a great deal, we are giving away 500 completely free this week. That means on all qualifying orders over at equa.life, you can get yours completely free. 250 for the female, 250 for the male, while supplies last. Check out the qualifying order details over at equi.life for all the details. Take care, and of course, let us know if there are any questions. Enjoy.